Okay, let's continue on to the next strategy. And that is, use the tools that are available to you. Now, as a student, you have many, many tools that are available to you to help you make it through, help you make you through uh, college. I specifically want to look at three tools specifically for getting better grades. And the first one is the written summary section at the end of each chapter. Don't ignore this written summary section. If you get assigned to read chapter six, the very first thing of chapter six you should read is the summary section. It might be you don't even need to read or you can just skim through the chapter after you've read the summary section, especially if this is a review course for you and you already know most of the, most of the material. But in these summary sections, there's frequently a list of all of the key words that are right in that chapter. Test yourself on these key words. Literally take your pen and touch each key word. Can you say the definition of that key word out loud? It doesn't count to say it in your head. You have to say it out loud. If you can, you know that you know that word. If you cannot, then that is something that you need to study. And frequently in the summary sections, there's a list of sample questions. Can you answer those sample questions? Unfortunately, most of the sample questions are written in essay format, but they're not too hard to change into a multiple choice format or a, fill, a short answer format. Use that strategy of predict questions as if you're the instructor right in the summary section. You may be, be able to come up with several questions right from the summary section. Very powerful uh, strategy and it's a tool that you have available to you. The next one is the CD-ROM that comes with, it, comes with the textbook. Now not all textbooks will have a CD-ROM. Many of them will. If your textbook comes with a CD-ROM, stick it in your computer. Some of these CD-ROMs are very, very good and some of them are not, but you don't know until you get them in your computer. Many of the good ones will have lecture notes on them, and if they have lecture notes, there's a real good chance that they're the same lecture notes the instructor is using. Many of them will have the PowerPoints on them, probably the same or similar that, that the instructor is using. They might have some games that you can play to help you understand the material, some little videos to help you understand the material. Sometimes there's a concept in class that's very easy to understand it's how the instructor presented it made it difficult. Well, here's a video of another instructor presenting that same material, and it's suddenly, aha, I got it. But frequently on these CD-ROMs is their sample quizzes. Now, from the student's CD-ROM, typically all you can do is take that sample quiz and test your own knowledge and memory. But from the instructor CD-ROM, I can copy out those questions and actually use them in a quiz or exam right in classroom. And I can do this with full academic integrity because I know if I have a, a class of 50 or so students, only four or five of those have actually put that CD-ROM in their computer. And maybe one or two will have looked at that to actually see what's on it. And those are the good students anyway, they're going to get a good grade no matter what but check out this CD-ROM and see what's on it if you have one with your textbook. And the last tool I want to talk about is the website for your textbook. Now not all textbooks will have a website, most of them will. If they come from a major publisher they'll have a website. The websites you frequently have to register with your name and school affiliation which means you're going to be getting some you know, junk mail but you can unregister later on. If your textbook has a website, go look at it. It probably has the same information that the CD-ROM has and a whole lot more. It'll have more videos, it will have more PowerPoints, it'll have more notes, it'll have more games. And there is frequently a little link there called further readings or other information. Now this link is on there specifically for the times when some concept is so fascinating to you that you want to spend your weekends doing your personal research and learn more about this topic. Well now in all reality this isn't going to happen too often as you're going through college. It's going to happen from time to time, but not too often. 
But there's another real good use for this link. In many of your courses, you are going to have to write papers on a topic that's covered within Chapter 6. And sometimes hard, the hard part is to figure out what to write about to start with. Well, if you go to the website, go to Chapter 6, click on this Further Readings, here's a list of all of the topics that are covered in Chapter 6. Find the one you're most interested in, or the one that you're least disgusted by, click on it, and here's all of this research comes up. Somebody else has already done your research. You don't have to spend hours out there on the web doing research. It's already done for you. You still have to cite it and reference it all appropriately, but here, just hand it to you. One of those tools that you have available to you. When I talked about active reading, I talked about staying focused or being mindful on the conversations. Well, this is also a reading strategy, to read actively, to stay focused or being mindful about what you're reading. Have you ever found yourself reading along and you know your eyes went across all the words, but nothing made it into your brain? That's a real good sign that you were not reading actively, that you were not staying focused. You got stuck in that daydream, and although your mind is somewhere else, your body went through the motions of still reading. This is also a very good sign that you need to take a break. And taking a break, taking frequent breaks, is a reading strategy, it's a study strategy, it's a memory strategy, it's an important strategy. If you have your schedule set so that you have to spend, uh, do a lot of studying on one day, well, take frequent breaks in there. Don't try and cram a lot of studying in, but take these frequent breaks. The trick to taking a break is a break is five minutes, maybe 10 minutes. On rare occasions, 15 minutes. A break is not three days. That's not a break from studying. So if you have to plan your schedule so you do a lot of studying on one day, take these frequent breaks, but come back to studying. Come back to studying. Have you ever found yourself either listening to class or reading something and the book or the instructor brings up this concept and your mind goes, oh, that reminds me of a time when. Whatever that concept was, you have just made a connection to that concept. Another way of looking at this is making your learning relevant. Much of the stuff you're going to learn in college is something you already know. You just didn't know it had a name. You didn't know it had this definition. So when an instructor brings up a concept, or you're reading along you come across, you have to ask yourself, have I ever used this in the past? And rack your brain and think, of all of my life, have I ever used this idea in the past? Have I ever stumbled across it in the past? You can change directions and go into the future and ask yourself, how will I use this in the future? Will I ever use this in the future? How can I use this in the future? And by answering these questions, you're making your learning relevant. You're making the connection between something you're learning and something you already know. And all of that material that you've made these connections to is something you're more likely to remember and something you're more likely to incorporate into your life. And the last little thing I want to talk about is this concept of talk with the author. Now, talk with the author does not mean that you telephone up the author of the textbook and say, hey, author, what did you mean by the third paragraph on page 247? Does not mean you send the author an email or a text message. Talk with the author is a very specific reading strategy. And you want to use this reading strategy very sparingly because this strategy will slow your reading down. You use this strategy for what I call the huh paragraphs. You know, you're reading along and you get it, and you read along and you get it, read along and you get it, and read along and huh? For those paragraphs. For those paragraphs you don't understand. There's a variety of, way of ways of using the talk with the author. One way is when you come across these uh, paragraphs you're not understanding, to ask yourself, author, what did you mean by this? And then go back and read this paragraph reread this paragraph trying to answer that question. Author, what did you mean by this? 
Another way of using the strategy, when you come across these paragraphs you don't understand, is to ask yourself, if I were the author, how could I reword this paragraph to make this paragraph more understandable? Then go back and read that paragraph and reword it sentence by sentence, sentence or word by word as necessary into your own words so that you can understand what this paragraph is trying to get across. Now you don't want to use this very often because it will significantly slow your reading down. But there are appropriate times to use this strategy. For example, if you have a paragraph that has two or three key words in it, it might be to your great benefit to spend some extra time on that paragraph to make sure you truly understand that paragraph. If you can truly understand that paragraph, you may be able to skim through the next three or four pages by spending some extra time on this one paragraph. And these are all of the strategies, finishing up the reading strategies and get better grade strategies that I would like to talk about in this lecture.